So what is the CMX500 Rebel all about? Well, Honda describe it as a chopped bobber style motorcycle blending traditional looks with modern technology. Although there isn't much of that technology, there is no traction control, there's no rider modes, there's no six access IMU. This is a back to basics ride and I think it's all the better for it. It's based around this proven 471cc parallel twin motor that can also be found in the CB500F, R and X. This A2 motor in the Rebel Tune puts out 34 kilowatts or 45 horsepower and 43 newton meters of torque. The slipper clutch makes for very slick gear changes and it also means a very light feel on the lever. Despite its relatively diminutive size, it weighs 190 kilos, which actually gives the bike a nice solid feel. And because of this very low 690 millimeter seat height, it means that maneuvering the bike around is actually very easy. The peanut-ish style tank holds 11.2 litres and because of the frugality of this 500cc motor you do get quite a good range in between fuel stops. One of the standout looks on this bike is the big 130 section front tyre and that's matched with a 150 section rear tyre both wrapped around 16 inch cast wheels. Suspension is taken care of with 41 mm telescopic forks on the front and a Showa Pro-Link shock in the rear. I found the ride to be very good. It's quite compliant, but relatively firm as well. And I found that that actually does give you real confidence in the twisties. The two into one exhaust has a suitable grumble and Honda seem to be turning out some nice exhaust notes recently. On this bike, it's down to the phased 180 degree firing order and the dual resonator chambers in the exhaust itself. The 100mm round LCD speedo is clear and simple and it shows just the speed, gear selection, trip meters and a fuel gauge. There are LED lights all round, but it also uses the indicators as driving lights. This is a particular bugbear of mine with modern Hondas and it's something I'd like to be able to turn off if I owned the bike. Drivers in the UK are not used to amber driving lights, so I fear with a quick glance they could be confused with indicators. There is also a funky side key which adds to the custom touch, and that's where I think this bike offers a lot. It seems like a perfect base for a bit of simple modification and customization. Hell, Honda even fitted a loop tail at the factory. A prime example of what can be done with this bike is the build by tattooist Dan Gold, which appeared at the Bike Shed show a couple of years ago. I started telling Honda about all these things I could do to the bike. I could customise it, turn it into this kind of motocross BMX. Well, they totally called my bluff and they said, here you go, here's our Rebel 500, show us what you can do. As this bike build went along, we just did more and more and more because the bike was just so easy to work on. It just lent itself to customization. I think it's amazing to be at the bike shed for the first time. We have achieved what we set out to do. We haven't compromised anything. And just to be here now and just see the bike finished is just unbelievable. So let's talk about what the Rebel is like to ride. The motor, although only putting out 45 horsepower, is quite perky and flexible. It pulls well through the gears and doesn't complain about ham-fisted attempts to accelerate out of corners in too high a gear. It's a very easy bike to ride smoothly. The power output is not going to set your pulse racing, but it's such a lightly stressed engine that it doesn't complain when ridden hard. Its relaxed manner has also proved it to be a very reliable, bulletproof motor. It will happily cruise motorways at the limit or above all day long. The riding position can be a little cramped if you're tall or have long legs. At 5 foot 10 with a 32 inch inseam, I was okay, but longer journeys became uncomfortable with the amount of leg bend required for the mid position foot pegs. A set of forward controls would be a welcome addition, and I found a few aftermarket companies that offer that option. Six footers might struggle, but anyone under my height will have very few issues. The seat is comfortable for most riding, but there isn't a lot of padding on it. 
The suspension is pretty good. It's not adjustable, but offers a decent ride. Only getting fidgety on poor road surfaces. That fat front tyre helps and actually offers really good feel and feedback. You can push on with confidence. Likewise, the brakes, whilst no eyeball removers, are solid and effective. This particular bike is the 2020 Special Edition and comes with the headlight cowl, fault covers and quilted seat. Overall, the build quality is what you'd expect from Honda and I can imagine that the ownership experience will be a good one. So who does this bike suit? Well, it, pretty much anybody really. If you're an A2 license holder, it's a perfect way, an entry point into this sort of bobber styling. You've got the looks, you've got the ability to customise it, but you've also got the durability and the build quality of Honda. If you're of a smaller stature, again, it's a perfect bike. That low seat height means that you can flat foot this easily, almost regardless of how short you are. And for a lot of other riders, I think it will just make a really nice second bike or even a prime bike. It's a great bike to go out for a ride on. It's simple, you've got no modes or traction control or any of that stuff on there. There's no ride by wire throttle. It's all cable operated, so uh, simplicity itself. I personally think it's a great looking little machine. I'd be quite happy to have this in my garage and drag it out for a little bimble around on sunny days. I also think you've got a great opportunity to be able to customise this and really personalise the bike. It's a really good bike that allows you to express yourself. Now taking in its size, its looks and the ability to customise it, I think it's a really good base and when you take into consideration the price that this is available at, I think it's a really good prospect. Inevitably in a review like this I'm going to miss some things and I can't cover everything so if you've got any specific questions pop those in the comment section down below. I hope you've enjoyed it and until next time I just want to say thanks for watching, take care, ride safe and I'll see you soon. Bye!